Welcome to Christmas Eve Worship. I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. And I'm so glad you chose to join us this evening. Please be sure to check out our website at www.ctkluth.org for more information about our mission and our ministry in Westchester and the surrounding areas. If you have a prayer request, you can also leave one online with us. You can find out ways that you can help to continue to support our mission and our ministry. I invite you to find a candle. You will need that later on in our service when we have candlelight singing of Silent Night. Now focus your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we listen to our prelude. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to all people. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we begin our Christmas Eve worship. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds." The word of the Lord. It's time for our gospel interruption. I have with me a collection of little story books that we have in our comfort room. It's a glassed off room for people who have small children who are feeling a little fussy or if you aren't feeling very well and would like to go and sit on a comfy couch you can go in there as well. There are some plush toys that are present, and we have these storybooks. This is the Tommy DePaula's Book of Bible Stories. You can see right in here, there's the story that Jesus is born. There's a coloring book that says, Celebrate Stories of the Bible on the cover. You can see here are all of the angels proclaiming the good news and this is one of my favorites. This is actually a soft little cloth book that someone has lovingly sewed that can be thrown, it can be chewed on, but it tells the story of the night Christ was born, also known as the Christmas story. Now these stories, these story books, contain an important story for us. A story of love. A story of a time when God showed up in a place that was completely unexpected. A story that is ours, that we tell others so that they can hear the good news. And we tell this story because it was first told to us. Somebody sat down with us and shared this story of the good news of Christ coming as a tiny child. A sign of God's deep and abiding love for us. This story is a story of love. But it's not the end of the story. It's the beginning of the story for all of us to remember. That Christ does not stay a small child. But he grows up to be a man. To die on the cross and rise again to complete the story. We know that every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And Christmas is the beginning. Easter is the middle. And in the end, we know because of Christmas, we can all celebrate 
eternity with one another in heaven. So let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to be born in a lowly manger, to grow into a man, to die and rise again, to give us new life. Bless all of us this Christmas Eve as we hear the story once again and as we tell it to others. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger, When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate and whose story we continue to tell generation after generation. Amen. The shepherds went and they told Everyone, what they had seen, and all were amazed. It can be easy for us during Christmas to become a little jaded or to even tune our ears out. This is a story that we have heard over and over and over again. Now, Christmas has a special place in our culture. And in our time, it wasn't always so in the Christian church. The story of Christ's birth is a little sketchy at points. For example, the story that we know, the story that we have told, always takes place in the middle of winter. Christmas carols talk about how the snow lays round about, crisp and even. We talk about how the child is born 
And in a very beloved Christmas carol, we sing about how no crying the child makes. However, if you have ever been a parent, a parent of a newborn, you know that the only way a child can communicate with you when they are born is crying. If the child is not crying, there is something that is wrong with the child. And so we are right to be concerned if our newborns are not crying out for our attention, for food, to have their diapers changed. But this story of Christmas is one that we tell over and over and over again. And we look forward to coming together to light candles, to sing carols, to remember this story as it has been told to us. We set up our creches. We make sure that we have angels and Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. Depending on which ethnic background you come from or which artistic style you like. It can either be folksy or it can be high renaissance where all of the people in the manger look like they came from Norway. Which we know simply is not how the story goes. The story is that there is a young woman in Palestine, in Israel, who finds favor with God, whom will bless the world. God will choose to come into a difficult and dangerous time, a time of strife and war and uncertainty, and will show up the beginning of the story of God's incarnation happens in Bethlehem in a manger. A small child is born. And this story is our story to share and to tell. Now, lately there has been a lot of online chatter from some of the higher theological class talking about the Greek word kataluma which is the word that is translated into in. We are told that as Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem, they're forced to stay with the animals because there is no room in the inn. Now, all of my life I'd always thought that Joe had not made reservations and had always imagined that conversation that they had. I thought you made the reservation. No, I thought you made the reservation. And the anxiety and frustration as Mary, being so close to giving birth, needed a place to stay. And the stable is dry and it is warm, but it is filled with animals. And this is our story, the story that we tell and continue to regurgitate and to remember, to listen to these carols which... We'll gloss over the smells and the sounds and the sights of birth and of animals because we want to get to the heart of what is going on in this story. That God is breaking into the world in a difficult time to bring love and to bring light. This last year has been difficult for all of us. And our stories vary, but all of us have been struggling and dealing with this pandemic. The need for that sense of the familiar, of light and love, has been gnawing at us. As of this Christmas and this time, it has been almost nine months that we have been asked to social distance, to be apart from one another. That is our story. But our story still contains the wonder of Christmas and the hope that it brings to us. The angels come and they appear to the shepherds and say, Glory to God in the highest. They tell the shepherds the good news that the Messiah has been born. The one who will save the world. And the shepherds are so excited they run to Bethlehem. And everything is as they have been told. Now sometimes for us our expectations of what Christmas should 
or would look like or could be can be dashed. We set up this story in our own minds of sitting around the Christmas tree and opening up presents or sitting at the dinner table and everything is marvelous. But we forget about the frantic search for the perfect toy or the perfect sweater or whatever else may have been the hot purchase this Christmas season. We forget about the difficulty in reconciling our political views with family members as we attempt to pass the overcooked and dry mashed potatoes. We gloss over all of these things because for us to dwell on the difficulty and on the danger, it doesn't help us to experience the love and the joy that we are told we should feel at Christmas. But this is our story. Christ does not come into the world to make it perfect. Christ is born in an imperfect world. Not in the comfort of an inn or the splendor of a palace, but the story of Christ as we know it begins in a lowly manger. An animal's feeding trough. The beauty of this story is that Christ puts on our flesh. Puts a human face on the God that we could never look at. Could never see. And allows us to know the deep and abiding love of a God who continues to pursue our hearts. Who breaks into our story of brokenness and imperfection. And shows us love. An all-encompassing love that offers us forgiveness. The story of Christmas begins at the manger. Ends at the open and empty tomb after Christ's death and resurrection. Every story has a beginning, a middle And an end and the story of Christmas begins with a story of life and light and love. And it ends with that same life and light and love. The life and love of a Christ who cared so deeply for us that he wanted to restore relationship between our broken world and God's perfection. He came to show us Perfect love in our imperfect and broken world. And this is the story of wonder that we have to tell. Of God's deep and abiding love for us through Jesus Christ. A story that we continue to tell. And yes, we will gloss over all the messy parts, the smelly parts, the uncomfortable parts. Because we want to focus on the love and the joy. And this is our story to tell. Go and see, say the angels to the shepherds. And the angels go and they see and they tell. Our story does not end tonight on Christmas Eve. It does not end tomorrow on Christmas Day. Our story of love continues all throughout the year. We know the beginning. We know the sacrifice and love shown to us in the middle on the cross. And we know the ending. That in spite of our brokenness, in spite of our imperfection, in spite of the difficulty and danger which surround us, there is hope and peace and love. And that is how our story ends. In never-ending life and never-ending love experienced by a God who has created all and loves all that God has created. Beginning in this lowly manger, we experience the depth and breadth of that love. And continue to experience a God who breaks in to unexpected places in our life. 
And so our job this Christmas Eve, the next 12 days of Christmas and beyond, is to continue to tell this story. To tell our story of the God who loves us and the Jesus that we are in love with because he first loved us and laid down his life for us. Right now, wherever you are, you can make this your own story. You can understand that it is not your goodness, but God's goodness and grace through Jesus Christ, which saves us. It's a story of God's continuing grace and forgiveness even when we are imperfect. That allows us to rejoice with the angels, to celebrate and to continue to tell this story again and again and again until all may hear and know the love of God. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the author of the story of our salvation. Amen. our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds tell the story. Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing as they tell the story of your great love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. 
May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth and one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing, Peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of all nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mary comforts and swaddles her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Bless all who continue to work on this Christmas Eve combating the COVID-19 virus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and parents who are expecting. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings, Glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all the prayers of our hearts to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The organ in the church was broken. And Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber scrambled for a Christmas Eve song that they could sing. One of the most beloved Christmas carols ever was written that night. I invite you to light a candle and sing along. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright Round yon virgin, mother and child Holy infant, so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly Peace, sleep in heavenly peace. 
Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven above, heavenly hosts sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night. Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from your holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at your birth, Jesus, Lord, at your birth. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. On behalf of the Congregation of Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio, the staff, all of our members, I would like to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Please be sure to visit our Facebook page and to like us so that you can keep up to date on all of the ministry and mission activities that will be taking place in the New Year. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and tell the good news that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Christ is born, while shepherds kept their watching, for silent flocks by night, behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when, when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Down, Down in a lonely manger The humble Christ was born And God sent us salvation That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on
on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born.